All right, so I am inside of a uh, reptile cage with my black dragon. He's hanging out down here. And as you can see, I'm inside. I'm, I had to clear some dirt out, so that's all trash bags full of dirt and all cage materials and stuff. So don't mind the, the grossness, but this is my little buddy Grindle. I wanted to actually get in here. Um, it's really hot and humid, which is good for him, but not too fun for me. But I wanted to get in here so I could hang out with him a little bit. I guess more without having to grab him and stuff, because I, I try to reach in here and hang out with him. But one thing that happens sometimes is, um, you know, I kind of reach in the cage and he's fine with me, but sometimes he's a little bit nervous. So he chooses to kind of run away um, or, or kind of walk slowly away to the back of the cage. And since this cage is so wide, it's three feet wide. Um, I can't really reach my arm in the back without like hanging in the cage and hurting my arm. So I figured, let me just get in. Um, so I showed you before, we're actually inside, um, so I can, like, pick him up and put him on my legs now, I can let him climb on my head, all, all kind of stuff that he, he used to want to do and explore me, I couldn't really let him do because he's small enough where if he gets away from me and something spooks him, he's gonna be able to run and get behind stuff and I'll have a really, really hard time getting him. Um, so, this guy's really great. He um, came from a, a breeder named C.J. Gentle in, in Alabama, who's one of the best breeders, in my opinion, in the uh, in the States, if not the best. I mean, he's certainly my favorite. Um, and originally, this guy kind of had a rough start, so he um, was shipped to me in December, and I live up in Pennsylvania, and his heat pack actually failed, um, and he got held at the FedEx hub for an extra day. So when I got him, his body was ice cold. Um, he was completely unresponsive. His body was limp. His eyes were closed. I really thought he didn't make it. And so I started, um, warming him up in my car slowly. Um, and about 15 minutes in, he took one breath. So I knew that he was still alive, but barely. And I just kept warming him up. It took him about an hour to get both of his eyes open. Oh, you're okay, bud. You're okay. You're Okay. He's just spooked. He's, I've never been in here with him, so... Um, but it took him, you know, an hour to get both his eyes open. Um, like I said, 20 minutes to start breathing, and, you know, his, his limbs started twitching a little bit, and he regained full full strength within about two hours of being heated up, and um, he's just been amazing since then. I mean, you know, like I said, he kind of had that scary, rough start, so he was a little bit skittish, and apparently... Some of his siblings are also skittish from that clutch. It seems to be almost, like, clutch-dependent. I know that some clutches that CJ's had have been, like, super, super, super calm straight out of the egg, whereas this clutch seemed to be a little bit more spooky. Um, but the cool thing about that is that you really have to work, um, you know, to earn their trust, and they're not so skittish that you can't really do anything. Like, as you can see, I'm petting him. He's fine. Um, when he was in his smaller cage, what I was using for, uh, socialization and stuff, I would just put my arm in and he'd walk up on me. Like, it's just, he came into this cage like three, four days ago. So this is still really new for him. Um, he's a super cool dude though. So we're just going to hang out with them. I'm going to see if I can maybe pick him up, put him on my legs, let him kind of hang out, let him walk around. Um, I really just want him to feel like he's the boss and like he can explore me. Um, because he never really has gotten to do that before. Like I said, because if I, you know, if I took him out of the cage and he was walking on me, um, if I went to grab him or, you know, one of my cats wanted to come in the room or whatever, he would just be spooked and then run away and get behind the cabinet or whatever. And I would never be able to catch him. So this will be really cool. Um, I'm going to start trying to do this every day. I don't really love it in here because it's super hot. Um, which means that, you know, it's the heat lights working and this is all, I check the temperature of this surface every day. That says about 130-ish degrees Fahrenheit um, on the surface right under the bulb. And then it kind of spreads out to, you know, cooler as you get farther away. So he gets to choose from really anything up to 130. But I really think this will be good for us because he just, he gets to explore me on his time. You can see he actually is curious. He's coming, you know, closer to me. He went away and now he's he's smelling me and he's walking over to me. Um, so he is a super curious boy, which is 
the most important thing um, to to getting a monitor that you know is tame eventually is curiosity because if these guys aren't curious at all, it's it's hard to force yourself on them in a way that's not um, traumatic, you know, and you don't want to traumatize them at all. Um, it's really important to kind of let them, in my opinion, let them dictate uh, the speed at which they want to interact with you and the progress they want to make. Obviously, you know, I, I try to pet him and stuff and, and do as much as I can to, to get those interactions in. But if he's super uncomfortable, I'm not going to grab him and, you know, hold him really tight and not let him run away. And that, that sort of stuff is, um, is kind of the, the trust breaker. So you can see he's smelling my shoes. Um, he's an interesting little guy and he's interested. He gets, he gets a little spooked with fast movements and stuff. You can see, um, the lighting in here is not great, but even at his size, um, can't really see it, but my, my thumb is like shredded, um, from just, you know, holding him and, and hanging out with him. And th this side is as well. And I don't force handle ever. Um, it's more just, I'll kind of try to treadmill him. I'll put him in my hand and I'll let him, you know, run through my hand onto the other hand. And I kind of keep that going. So he has to stay in my hands, but it's not confinement. If you like grab them and you're, you know, squeezing them really hard, they feel like you're going to eat them. So um, that's when they kind of get spooked, but he's doing great for now. Um, we're just going to keep hanging out. I mean, this is, you know, really, really a cool step because his last cage, this cage is five feet long. Um, but my back is up against the back. So you can see my feet almost kind of are, you know, over that side. It's kind of just big enough for me to get in if I sit up. Um, but it's five feet long, three feet high, and then three feet side to side. So, um, this will be big enough for him for probably a few more months. Um, he just moved in here a couple days ago. He was in something that was three by like two and a half by, uh, one and a half tall. So much smaller, but that small cage kind of lets you interact with them in a way where they can't really get away from you and it's easier to reach them. So like I said, the problem with this cage is, you know, it has this big lip up here, um, in case I wanted to fill it with dirt. It used to be filled with dirt. That's what all those bags are. Um, but you know, that thing makes it really hard to, to reach in if he's all the way back in like this corner or something, or if he's back here in the water, it's hard to reach in and, um, you know, get that interaction in and stuff. So that's why I, I think it's really cool that I get to come in here and eventually he's going to live outside in Florida. We're moving there this summer. So he's going to have a giant, giant outdoor space. Um, probably going to build him something that's in the, in the realm of like 50 feet by 25 feet. Um, so he'll have monstrous amount of room. He's right now about 26 inches long. Um, and he was born in November. He was born on November 17th. So he's just about one, two, three, four, five months old right now. Um, and he's over two feet. His siblings, not from the exact clutch, but from the same, uh, you know, parental pairing, um, if fed a lot, have been known to hit five feet within a year. So um, they kind of go through little growth spurts as well. Um, his breeder said that he finds that when he upgrades them into a new cage, they're more active, their appetite, you know, is, is maybe a little bit bigger and they also have more area to, to kind of grow in. So, um, you know, I think he'll, he'll kind of start exploding with growth. And then when we move in July, um, he's going to be getting an eight by four by four. So he'll, you know, get a much bigger cage. And then after the eight by four by four, when he's full grown, um, his dad is eight feet long. So if he turns out to be a male, he could get up to every bit of eight feet. Um, and when he reaches that size, he will go outside. So when I move, I'm going to start building his outdoor cage because I don't want to be stuck with, you know, him in too small of a cage for any amount of time. Um, and then he'll get, you know, a, a big, big outdoor cage. He's poking his little head out. Hey, buddy. Hey, bud. How you doing? So yeah, but I just I really wanted to start making YouTube videos of these guys because they're so, so cool. I'm actually gonna pull this out a little bit. I don't wanna spook them, but I do wanna give them a little pet. You okay, bud? You're okay, it's just me. Yeah, this is all new for him. So, um, you know, having me in here, being able to walk around on his own terms and all that stuff, so. Don't want to spook him too much, but you know, just he's he's acting really good right now. Actually, I wanna I wanna be able to um, 
See, that's when it gets a little bit scary. And if you were to do that outside the cage, you would just be gone. So this is really cool that I get to come in here. I'm not gonna stay in here for too long because it is hot. Um, it's probably, I don't know, 85 degrees over here. And that thing is 130 degrees. So that side is probably, you know, 90. This side is 85-ish with me in here, it's getting hotter. Um, so it is nice and hot, but um, this dude's doing awesome. So just gonna keep doing this kind of thing. I wanted to start making videos though, because they're so cool. And, and you know, coming up this summer, I'm gonna be building large outdoor cages for them. Um, and I really thought that, you know, I kind of have a decent following on TikTok. And I thought that if there's enough people on TikTok, you know, with short form content, maybe some people would like some some longer content with these guys. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. This is kind of my first video, more of like a test. Um, just figured I'd talk about Grindel for a little while. Um, and, you know, fill you guys in and you can hang out and watch him grow and, and do all that stuff. So he is a very good boy. Um, say goodbye, Grindel. Can you say goodbye? Here, I'll try to get the camera closer to him. Hey, bud. Yeah, it's okay. It's just the camera. Say goodbye. He says goodbye. So thanks guys so much. If you enjoyed the video, if you want to see Grindel grow up, I also have a lot of other reptiles, snakes, um, geckos, I have a caiman, all that sort of stuff that are all going to be getting amazingly cool outdoor cages eventually. Make sure you subscribe, like the video. If you have any ideas for any reptile videos you want to see, make sure to comment below and I will see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.